got him. He popped it hard. Oh my gosh, JJ. That is another nice one. Another good one. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, that's a really nice one. Grab him. Big one. That's a big one. It's a real big one. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Cole and Jay and we have yet again returned out here to the Cypress Tree Swamp and we are hoping to get in there and hopefully catch some crappie. We've yeah. been catching quite a few over the last week and a half, two weeks or so, and we're hoping that we can catch some more. This bite window does not last for very long in the fall, so we're trying to catch as many as we possibly can while they are here and we're both very excited. It's one of our favorite ways to fish, you know, with a little jig beneath the bobber and it's just beautiful scenery and it's mm -hmm. just, it's just really awesome. It's a lot of fun to catch these fish out here. So we're gonna try to do just that. We hope y'all are excited to join along with us out here on this afternoon crappie fishing adventure. If so, do us a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of these future wild and crazy crappie fishing adventures. But that being said, we got slabs to catch. Let's go. Let's do it. He popped it hard. It's a decent fish. Oh, it's a real decent fish. Oh, stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. Get in the boat. Yeah. There we go, guys. There's the first one of the afternoon. He absolutely crushed that little salt and pepper jig. That is definitely a keeper. He's gonna be like 12 inches or so. Really, really nice fish. That's exciting. Getting the afternoon started off just right with a big old Keeper slab crappie. Let's get some water in that bucket and let's get back out there. Another one. Big and oh he came off. Oh no. That was another giant. Oh that's a nice one. That's a nice one, JJ. Oh that's a really nice one. Grab him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just lost that big one, but now Jay is on the board with another monster black crappie. A slab, That baby. is a slab. He looks so beautiful with the light coming in on the I back know. side of his fins. Wow, what a beautiful fish. We're trying to be quiet. We don't want to spook these fish. We're in a very, very small little area. So we're going to drop this one in the bucket and get back out there and see if we get another one. Put him in the bucket. <laughs> oh, God. Big one. Another good one. Another good one. Oh, that's a nice fish. Get up here. <laughs> There's my second keeper crappie of the day. Another one just on that little one and a half inch tube. That makes three keepers so far. There are definitely some good ones here in this little spot. That is exciting. There we go. There's a good one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, JJ. That is another nice one. Oh, she flipped him in. Just flip him right in. Oh my gosh, we are catching nothing but slabs right now. That is so exciting. And did you see me just flipping right in the boat? No, you just flipped him in. <laughs> that was awesome. There's this nothing. is definitely a bucket worthy fish. Absolutely. Drop him in there. That sun is starting to set. Hopefully it'll go down sooner than later because it is really bright, but yeah. we're slaying them, so it don't matter. <laughs> oh, get him. Get him. Get him. Another big one. Another big one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, another good one. This is so much fun. Oh, can't get enough of it. Drop him in there. Give me some. Some bastards having field day on those shad. Got him. Got him. It's loaded. It's loaded. That spot is loaded. Oh, nothing but keepers, too. Look at him go. 
in the boat. Boom, that's another nice one. Mm. They're biting it on after long pauses. So we'll twitch it a couple times, let it sit there for like three or four seconds, maybe even five seconds, and then they just pop it, they bust it. Suck the whole thing down. Ooh. That's a crappie. That's a big old sucker. Yes, sir. Woohoo. It was a little cat and mouse game for a minute, but we finally got him in the boat. We changed our angle because that sun was just blind, I guess. It was ridiculous. It was hard to film in. And uh, this is actually a much better um, angle to where we're actually trying to cast at. Oh, Jay just got smoked. That's another nice keeper in the bucket. My bobber was gone. That's not a crappie. I think these guys are responsible for messing with our heads. Yellow bass pull it down similarly to a crappie, but they ain't the same. There we go. Ooh, is that a crappie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Slabs only. I am catching nothing but slabs. And I am loving it. Look at that fish. Let me see that big guy. <laughs> big old fatty. <laughs> Drop him in with his buddies. Yee yee. Gotcha, son. That's how you do it right there. That is the biggest one of the day. Look at the size of that mouth. I swamped it to a little bit larger size plastic. I threw it into a big old pot of minnows and I didn't even move it. He just busted it. He thought one of his little minnow buddies he was stalking died and he ate it. Big old guy. Okay guys, the sun has nearly set. Man, what an eventful little afternoon out here on the lake it was. It was kind of stressful. We were trying to be quiet in some of these spots. There were some other anglers looming in the distance. You know, we were trying to not give away the hot spot because it was on fire. Oh, Jay's in the bucket gonna get a couple of these slabs out to show us. She just got soaked. <laughs> it's so funny to turn this around. She just got <laughs> got by those slabs, didn't you? <laughs> that really big one that you caught just splashed me. Yeah, that big one that I caught last second was a really nice addition to the bucket. But all the fish, we caught them right here, basically. This little hole. Not sure why they were hanging there, but they were. They were, oh gosh. Oh, look at that. Look at that fish. That, that is. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. And that is why you come out here and do some crappie fishing in the fall time because big slabs, will, they'll gang up. And if you get a little honey hole like this, you can catch them one after another until you catch them all, basically. Cool. But I think we have like eight or nine or maybe even 10 in the bucket. We'll count them up when we get back to the house, but we need to get there before it gets too dark. What a monster. <laughs> yeah, that is a stud. I think that has to be the biggest one we've caught so far this oh, fall. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. He's not, gosh, he's not too, I don't think he's two pounds, but he's going to be like, pound and three quarters or so he is a thick boy he's gonna have some big old fillets on him <laughs> all right let's put him back in the bucket and let's get out of here before we get lost or something something yeah. bad happens we've had a good afternoon <laughs> the best We got the fish all cleaned and cooked up and today we are going to be making one of my favorites and that is a slabby patty. Ah. So we have all of our ingredients that we're going to be using right here. We got our little helper Cypress. How you doing this today Cypress? This is his first time making slabby patties. He just dropped his spatula. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now he's going to try to grab my bun. <laughs> but anyways, let's show you guys how we like to put together our slabby patties. Um, so we have our buns and we have some tartar sauce. 
you got to have tartar sauce. But Cole doesn't like tartar sauce, so he doesn't put it on his. But it definitely tastes really good on there. Here. I'm just going to get a little out. I'm not left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're gonna grab our piece of fried fish, AKA our slabby patty. We're gonna lay it on there. And then we're gonna top it with some tomato. And we have some romaine lettuce. And you cannot not have pickles. So we're gonna add some delicious pickles. I just picked these up at the grocery store today and I gotta say they are they By are, far, some of the best pickles I've ever had in my life. They are really good. Sorry I'm picking them out with my hand. That's okay. They're called butcher shop pickles. And this whole tub was like three bucks. I was like, dang, I cannot pass that up. Okay, so we have the pickles on. Now, we put the top bun on. And we have a slabby patty. Cypress, what do you think about that slabby patty? Does it look good? You think you could eat it with your two teeth? Yeah. <laughs> Looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> You weren't much help putting it together. No, you weren't. Oh gosh, <laughs> oh, gosh. and you're gonna destroy it, aren't you? Don't destroy you? it, Cypress. Destroy Don't destroy it. It's a work of art. <laughs> Jay, you made that thing look delicious. Now let's see how it tastes. Okay, here we go. Cypress. Oh, Cypress. Cypress, leave my plate alone. This takes two hands. Mmm. <laughs> what do you think about it, Cypress? Oh man. <laughs> That is fantastic. Oh my goodness. This is like the best. These sloppy patties are like my favorite ways to eat fish. Is it better than a filet of fish at McDonald's? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We could give McDonald's a run for their money with this. <laughs> if we ever open up a food truck, we'll definitely have to make uh, sloppy patties. <laughs> yes. Let's we'll make our poor man's lobster fish. We'll have our sloppy patties. We'll have just regular fried fish and it'll be good. Mm. Well, Cypress, can you run the food truck for us? Colin Jake food truck? <laughs> you want to do that? Oh, get him, Jack. You got him? Oh, first cast. Are you kidding me? Eight seconds into this shindig. Heck yeah, that's a good sign. It's not a monster. No. But Oops. it is a good sign, indeed. Sweet, a nice little swamp bluegill. Not a bad <laughs> size. You could definitely eat that in a pinch, but... We're going to catch some bigger ones. I think we're going to catch some bigger ones, yeah. too, especially if they're biting like that. That is a good sign. So this is kind of the rig we got going on today. We are using some night crawlers here. And we are just running them on some light jig heads. Um, normally, when we're fishing for bluegill, we use just like a number six or number four hook with a little BB split shot, but I couldn't find any split shots, so we're using light 132nd ounce jig heads today, which work just as good. Oh, get him, JJ. Ah, I missed it. Got your cheese smoke. Did you get my worm? Yes. No, you get, no, you're good. No, you got some of it. Got some of it. There he is. There he is. Is that bigger than the last one? Yeah, a little bit bigger. Just a tad bit bigger. <laughs> I'd say it's quite a bit bigger, honestly. Yeah. Good fish. Still a little bit too small to keep, but we'll throw them back. We'll get a good one. We'll get a good one here. Biting good. Oh, there we go. Oh, you got a good one? Feels bigger. What is that? <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was sure fighting hard. He's bigger. He is bigger. They keep getting bigger by like three or four millimeters each time. <laughs> Nice little sunfish. Beautiful. So pretty. You're all setting up three nothing. Yeah, where's the big boys at though? Got him. Oh, that's a nice fish. Mm -hmm. Big fish. What is that? Oh, he just stuck around some crap? I think it's a big one. <gasps> yes, it is. Oh, oh look at the head gosh. on that thing. Now that is that what is we're what after. I mean, I'll be getting the same numbers as you, Jay, but I'm getting, I'm getting the correct species. That is a nice red ear. Wow. It took us wading through some smaller fish to finally get our first keeper, but that is a solid one. Beautiful red ear. I honestly think that's kind of more of a hybrid. It doesn't have that really bright red ear. Looks like a hybrid between a bluegill and a red ear, honestly. Um, but either way, that is a really solid fish and definitely the size we're after. And you can see he's got that jig head just hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> I had the tiniest piece of worm on there too. He looks so pretty with the sun shining through his... 
fins. That's one thing we love about coming out and catching these, these panfish is that they all come in different shapes and sizes and colors, especially when you get these hybrids like this. But we'll drop them here in this bucket. And uh, I gotta get some more worm on my hook and get back out there. Maybe the red ear is starting to bite. Woo oh, snap. Oh. oh, snap. Decent one? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Dang. Some more of the same. Yeah. We're going to put the whole night crawler on the hook to get some big ends. Well, I had them. Look at, look at the, all that oh, night that, crawler. That's a on chunk. There. You're going to catch catfish with that. Yeah. Another nice little bluegill, <laughs> though. I'm going to sneak up in here and get that big end that was looking at your bait. Right before you pop a little one. Oh, he bit it. Got him. Oh, gosh. What is that? That's big. Oh, it's a shiner. Are you I think it's a shiner. It's a shiner. What? You can't eat that. You can't eat that. Unless it's a survival situation. <laughs> I have eaten a shiner before and it wasn't very good. So if you're thinking about eating a shiner, I don't recommend it. <laughs> that's a big old gold shiner. Maybe that's part of the issue. These guys will steer big because they have tiny little mouths. Big fish, but you got a tiny little mouth. He makes some good bait, but we'll throw him back. He'll be a lucky, lucky guy today. Not planning on doing any fishing in the next few days. That would require him as bait, so. Watch, I'll probably change my mind in a couple days, but I'm going catfishing. Wish I had a big old shiner to use. Mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. Double, double, double. Oh, uh oh. Big. Uh oh. Mine feels good. Jane plan. Okay. Jane plan. That's a good one. It took us long enough to get our first daily double of the day. Mine <laughs> is definitely not a keeper. And Jay's is kind of borderline. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Would you keep that? Would you eat that fish? Scale them, cut the head off, I eat them all? I probably would. would. That's a good one. Go in the bucket. Go in the bucket. That's a good one. Jay, you're on the board with the first keeper. How does it make you feel? Oh, good. A I have relieved. a fish to eat. That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You ain't getting my red ear. That's my fish. <laughs> oh, I got one. Oh, gosh. Your barber's gone. That's a nice one, oh, too, wow. isn't it? What is that? What oh. is that? Is that a shiner? Oh. You got you a big old shiner? What is it? Oh, oh it is a big old shiner. I was just joking. <laughs> Man, what a cool fish though. They fight good, it's that's like for some, sure. Like some little mini swamp tarpons. <laughs> you get that deep side, they can just roll around. But, there you go, hard to lift, they got tiny little mouths. Yeah, but you do not look appetizing. Nope. <laughs> he said, I look appetizing to a seven pound large mouth. Oh yeah. Well, now we've caught two shiners, I think that they're definitely responsible for all the fish we've been missing. Say that. Could be little guys too. Hey, mm. little, not too bad. That's a pretty one. Not too bad. Very next cast. That's a full colored bluegill right there. So pretty. He's a little bit smaller than the one we just kept, so we'll Ooh. send him back. Cause the one we kept was honestly a little bit borderline, but definitely, definitely a work. Got him. Whoa. What are you doing, buddy? Video. Oh, How big is he? Oh, oh, he's a good oh, one. Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one, JJ. Oh. Okay. Hey, okay. here's this little guy I just caught tossing him back. Jay, I think has much better plans for this one here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I said like, oh yeah, like five times in a row, but. Hey, maybe maybe, maybe they'll get on to you for repeating yourself. <laughs> you always give me a hard time for repeating myself. You can't help it sometimes. Can't help it. Voila. Nice. <laughs> now that is a quality bluegill. Yes. Keeper every day of the week. Took a while, but we got him. Maybe this is the spot. Not the most beautiful bucket. I rate the inside of this bucket like a 2 out of 10. It looks kind of gross. But it holds water. And that's the most important thing. I was going to use a stringer. This makes life a lot easier. I got to get some new buckets. Ooh, oh, what's, whoa, that? Whoa, whoa. what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? He is so hard. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Baby. No, no, that felt nice. Yes, this is a really nice hybrid. Been trying to catch one all morning. Took a long time, but yeah. we're, we're, we're probably already like 30 fish deep at this point. Yeah. And we've only got, I think we have three keepers since we are fourth one. We've got two of these really nice bluegill red ear hybrids. Um, I think it's a hybrid. Seems like it. It looks doesn't, like doesn't it. Look, it doesn't look like a purebred red ear. No. It's a little bit too, too dark in my opinion. But anyways, he's got some thick slab sides. He smoked that night crawler and he's going to go in the bucket to our newfound bucket. <laughs> Oh, that was so much fun. I want to catch more this size because that, that fight was awesome. Just keep throwing it out there and I'm sure we'll weed through some more small ones and get some more big ones along the way. <laughs> Good job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Big one. Big good one. Yes, good one. There we go, Jay. That's another nice bluegill. Yeah, we moved back over to the spot where we first started, and that's a good one. My first cast back over here. Yeah, that's a definitely a really nice size bluegill. Let's add him into the bucket and let's get back to throwing over th over at those uh, logs and get some more good ones. <laughs> Here we go guys, the highs and lows. Oh gosh, a fishing in a swamp. I told you I was gonna break that limb. <laughs> she got hung up in that tree and pulled the whole tree down with her. Oh my goodness. Still kind of a mess, but it happens. Sometimes and, you get excited and you forget, like you got a tree right over your head. Yeah, but hey, at least you got it and you got that stick out of the way. So next time we sit underneath it, we won't hit it. Now I just gotta untangle this mess. I kid you not guys, next cast. Jay is in another predicament. Hey, oh, I got it. She got it. She's ripping. She's ripping. No, my line was tangled around the tip of my rod, and I was like trying to get it undone, and then it went up in the tree. Oh, yeah. Hey, that'll do it. Oh, 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 oh. Decent one. Holy. There we go. There's me, another keeper, finally. Nice bluegill. I had another nice one on the cast before, and I think that they might be stacked up right there. So I'm gonna try to turn the canoe around. We can reach those fish a little better. We've gotten ourselves back here into some really tight quarters, but it seems like there's some fish chilling. Yep, get out of that stick. Not a bad one, is that a red ear? It's a red ear, pure bread. Pure bread, baby little red ear. Look at that, beautiful little red ear. Where's this big daddy at? Might already be in our bucket, to be honest with you. We'll see you. Got him, begging, begging, Ooh. begging. Big red ear, big nice. red ear. There's his big daddy. So that is a nice red ear bluegill hybrid. I do believe, look at that. He's got this weird chunk missing out of his gill plate. It's pretty crazy. But we just caught that small one the cast of four, asked where his big daddy was, and he said, I'm right here. <laughs> and now he's in there. Ooh. All right, guys, we just made a little move. This will be the last little area we're gonna fish today. Hopefully we'll find some. It's a little bit more open. We were getting bit by mosquitoes in the middle of all those trees, so we kind of got out here on the edge. But there is still some good shade. Oh, and Jay's already got a bite. She got him? Oh, yeah. Biggin. Got him. Decent, decent one? Feels good. First cast. That was a good move. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. Good one. That is awesome. That might be my biggest bluegill of the day. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. First cast pulling up in the spot. Hopefully there's more. Hopefully they're all about that size, too. Yeah. You know, these fish, they'll sometimes get you know where they school up in the same size class and it seems like oh Ooh. the majority of the fish we were catching were all small i mean we caught a ton of little ones we obviously can't show you every little fish that we caught otherwise the video would be like three hours long hopefully we find some more big ones over here oh my gosh was that a bass? That's a bass that was crazy where's your poppers at holy smoke he didn't just smack it once either he came after that thing do it again. Something did. Oh, what is that? Is that, him? Is, oh, that him? is that a big fish? Another big bluegill. Whoa. Good one, Jay. Oh, I got one too. Oh, okay. missed him. Okay. Missed him. Got him. Nope. Missed him again. <laughs> That's a good spot. Yeah. Big cool. old bluegill. Add him in the bucket. Got him. Biggin. Biggin. Tubster. Big old bluegill. Jay, you got one too. Oh, oh missed him again. Big old bluegill. Ooh, he's purple. I know the coloration of these guys are weird. They look like cold water bluegill. He is kind of cold. He's got some kind of weird stuff. Looks kind of diseased. Hmm. I'm gonna throw him back. He's got some weird stuff going on down there. I say down there, he's got like these parasites and just weird stuff right there. But it's a cool fish. He's like super purple. Oh, oh, oh that looks thick. That's a good one. That looks thick. Ooh. Oh, <gasps> Oh, I love red ear. Red eared slider or red eared sunfish? Both. So, I like both. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool fish, dude. He's honestly not, he's a good size. We've kept some bluegill that big, but you know, red ear, they seem, they get bigger than bluegill. Yeah. So he's kind of small. He's not small. He's kind of medium for a red ear. So medium. maybe we'll let him go and let, let him get bigger for next year. Oh, he's so pretty. Got him. Got him. Feels pretty good, honestly. Mm. <laughs> kind of medium guy. 
We might have one in there already that size, but we'll throw some back. We're looking to get one more good keeper, whether it be a good bluegill or a good red ear or a good catfish <laughs> or whatever. Just one more good fish. And then we're gonna head on in. We've been out here for a while now and we've got a good mess of fish here in this bucket. Oh, big something, big something, big something. Yes, oh, nice. there we go. All right, well, that is an excellent way to end our panfish fishing mission. We caught some really nice fish out here. We caught a bunch. We caught probably 50 all together, a ton of tiny ones, guys. Like, we caught some that are like that big, like, no <laughs> lie. But we did mix in some good ones like this right here. This is another good hybrid bluegill red ear. And um, we'll add them to the bucket. I think we probably got 10 or so, maybe a dozen. Oh, gosh. Woo! In there right now. And um, overall, I'd say we had an excellent time catching these fish. Yeah. We caught them in a, in a pretty pretty good hurry. We were only out here a couple hours, so definitely have no complaints there. But we're going to get these fish. We're going to head back to the house. We're going to get them cleaned up, and uh, we're actually going to cook them up for lunch today. So we will see you guys whenever we get there. So if you've never cleaned a fish before, this is one of the easiest ways to prepare and clean a fish without wasting any meat. You just get a spoon or a knife. I usually prefer a spoon. It gets the scales off a lot easier. And you're just going to rake them off from the tail to the head, just like this. You see they come off really, really easily. I guess you could technically leave the scales on and uh, eat around them, but I just feel like this, this is a better option. All right, so our fish is completely scaled and then we'll just cut the head off. I like to cut right here at the vent right here and kind of cut at an angle up to the top of the head. Kind of work it around the head so you get all the meat. And so then what you're ultimately left with is this piece of fish right here. You have a whole scaleless fish with the head removed, the bones are inside of there. And what we're going to be doing is just frying this guy up. Um, we feel like leaving the bones in actually enhances the flavor of the fish. I mean, they're obviously really good, just filleted um, boneless, um, but this is just a fun way to eat fish. And if you're somebody that isn't really that good at cleaning fish, I'm not that good at filleting, you have to worry about you know missing out on some good meat. So that is one of our fish down. We've got about 10 more to go. Um, we'll wrap that up really quickly and then we'll get to cooking. All right, we are just about ready to start getting our fish ready to throw into the skillet. But first we gotta get them all battered up so they can come out nice and crispy once we're done frying them. You know, preparing fish whole and frying them this way is a little bit more of an ordeal than just simply um, just frying the fillets, but it's kind of like the trade-off. You know, it's easier to clean them this way, but a little bit more difficult to cook them. But you know, it is what it is and it's really gonna be all worth it in the end. So what I have here is two different bags of um, different flavored fish mixes. This one here is more of a Cajun. This one here is just actually just straight up yellow cornmeal. And I've actually already thrown my uh, my fish into this batter. So what we're gonna be doing, we're, we're gonna be double dipping, we're gonna be double battering these fish just so that they turn out really nice and crispy. There's been times whenever I've um, had fried whole fish or I've prepared it myself and it just didn't really come out crispy because I only battered it once. And um, you know, I've found that if you double batter it, you know, it's always going to come out nice and crispy, even though sometimes you can just do it once and it'd be crispy. But anyways, so here's our fish. It's kind of dripping some batter everywhere. It looks really nice. And so now that we have our fish battered for the first time, we need to go in for the second dip. But to do that, we first have to dunk it in this little mix right here. This is actually some eggs that I whisked up and I added a little bit of milk to it. And uh, we are going to be dunking this whole fish into there. I had to be careful not to spill it. And then we're going to be dunking it into the cornmeal and then that will go into the skillet with the oil. This is definitely the worst part of all this, but it's definitely worth it. There you go, just a little shallow dish, the egg whisk. And those of y'all have been watching for a while, you see that we do this all the time when we're cooking fish this way. And also when we're cooking like frog legs, maybe even deer meat, if we want that extra crisp. So we got him in there. Kind of shake them up a little bit. Got a plate right here. I'm actually going to take this guy out of the bag so there's plenty of room for the other ones. Let's see how it turned out. I like to grab him by the fin. Look at that right there. That looks very thickly battered. We'll sit here on this plate. And so now we just got to repeat the steps again with the rest of these fish and we will be ready to fry them up. All right, we got everything all set up now. We've got the skillet with the oil all heated up and we have our fish all battered. And I think we're just about ready to sizzle. Let's, let's give it a little test. 
Oh yeah, we ready. It's hot. Let's get these guys in there. I think I can do, I don't know if I can do all five of them, but I can probably do four of them in there at once. And uh, it shouldn't take them too long, maybe three or four minutes tops. Cool. Okay, looks like they're about done. Oh, that looks perfect. I was able to get them all on here too. Oh, snap, guys, those look fantastic. What you think, Jay? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> they look so crunchy too. And Thank you for coming in clutch. Jay was gone. She went on a McDonald's run. She went and got a couple Big Macs and she, she didn't think that was going to be any good. And I did not get I'm, a couple Big Macs. I'm just kidding. She went and got us a drink. I got us some drinks. She had a drink hers, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I got me a nice DP. Because mm. I'm thirsty. I've been wanting a DP all morning. And uh, I've also been wanting some fried whole red ear mm. all morning. And I think they're going to be so good. Yeah, they look extra crunchy. They look hard as a rock. That's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want it to be all mushy. And that will happen from time to time if you just if you just batter them once you're more than likely going to have um, a soggy product you gotta batter it twice and you're more than likely going to have a nice crunchy, crunchy product and that's what you want in this way yes. you also want these fins crunchy so you can eat the fins but they're probably pretty hot but i think i'm just gonna go ahead and go for it i can't wait i'm starving <laughs> okay i'm gonna go with this guy right here i think i touched him like five or six times just then so i think it's destiny that i go with this one first so this is our fried whole bluegill red ear hybrid specimen. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do first, if you've never had them this way, which I'm sure most of y'all have had them this way, you're gonna take these fins off. And gosh, he is hot. <laughs> Holy smokes, let me set him right here. Whew. Save the fins for later. You gotta save the fins for later. That is so hot. Might, we might need to rethink our life decisions at the moment. <laughs> that is, that's gonna burn the top of my tongue. Okay, then you have the tail. You can eat the tail. It's like eating a potato chip. It just tastes like the battery fried it in. And we're just gonna go ahead and do that because that's probably not too hot. Yummy. Very crunchy, very tasty, very satisfying. Mm. If you think that that's weird, don't knock it till you try it, right, Joe? Right. Like, you gotta eat the tail if you fry fish whole. It's like so good. Mm. The fins are good too. But they're a little bit crunchy because they're kind of they're kind of spiny. But anyways, you can see once you remove the fin, you can see the two halves. These are like where your typical fillets are going to be whenever you whenever you fillet the fish normally. And so you can use your hand. Well, that's kind of spicy. Wow. Or you can use a fork, and peel it apart. Since it's so hot, we should probably be using a fork. But I don't have a fork, so we can use our hands. I'm just gonna look at that. See how it's separating right off that main spine. That is perfect. Now we gotta pick what side we want. We want this side. Jeez, that's hot. Okay. Whoop. All right, it came right off. And then you're gonna want to inspect it. Make sure there's not too many bones in there. Shouldn't be too many because it just fell right off. All right. That looks so good. Crunchy on the outside, white and flaky on the inside. See how it tastes. Don't burn your tongue. Mm, no promises. <laughs> Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> that is so good. I knew it was gonna be good. It was a lot of it was a lot of effort. And like I said, it's a little bit more of an ordeal to prepare them this way to get them to be just right. But I'm telling you guys, it is so, so worth it. It's so delicious. Mmm. Jay, you gotta get in on some of this. This is delicious. Way better than that McChicken or that McDouble or Big Mac that you ate secretly at McDonald's. I know you, I know you got something. What'd you get? What'd you get? McChicken. There's no way you left there without getting a snack off the dollar menu. I got a hot and spicy McChicken. There it there is. The, it. the truth is out. She got a hot and spicy McChicken. It's okay. You can pre-game with a hot and spicy McChicken, but... I'm still going to eat the fish. I was just so hungry. <laughs> okay. You want the other You want the other side of this one? Sure. Okay. All right. Get yourself a good piece. Is it hot? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we got to get down to the bottom of this. Is it better than a McDonald's hot and spicy? Hmm. You should have waited, Jay. You should have just waited. We have all this fish. I'm gonna eat it all. <laughs> mm. That's delicious. Is it better than the hot spicy? 
Mm, yeah. Those, those hot and spices are good though. They are. Like, let us know down in the comment section what's your favorite thing off the McDonald's menu. Let me know. We don't eat McDonald's very often. We don't. There's, I knew you were hungry, and I was trying to get these done quickly. Yeah, I'm not judging you, Jay. I know. I know. I know the struggle of going through the McDonald's drive-through and only getting a drink. When you're so hungry. When you're so hungry. But we got it done, and we've got ourselves a whole platter here of fish to eat. We don't have any sides. Might need to figure out that, but I think we'll see this first and figure that out later. Fish on. There we go. <laughs> that didn't take long at all. He's not very big, but look how fat he is. Little chunky guy. There's a couple chasing after it, too. There we go. Nice little bass to start things off. Buzz baiting. It's kind of grimy right here. There's a lot of leaves and there's some nasty kind of just scum on top of the water, which kind of impedes the action of the buzz bait just a little bit, but it's a lot clearer out there. And I've been hearing some splashes out that way, so. It's looking good for us. Like forecast in, we already got one. I like the chances of us catching a bunch today. Right here. Right here in front of me, guys. Right here, right here, right here, right here. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. On this one, bait. On this one, that's a nice one. All right, there we go. There we go, number two. He's got, oh, that's just my fit, it's my swim bait. <laughs> I was about to say he's got fish tail coming out of his mouth. There we go, second one's bigger than the first one. Quality fish, they were schooling right here underneath the water. Subsurface schooling right here. Throw back in there again real quick. I'm kind of out here in a good spot to cast now. I've been kind of stuck in the trees. There we go. Buzz bait. <laughs> oh gosh, that's fun. That's fun. That is fun. <laughs> Smoke the buzz bait, guys. Man, not a monster, but there's some big ones blowing up out here. That's our third one. That's our third one. Oh my gosh. It's like so tempting to just keep just chasing them around, but I feel like I could just sit, you know, kind of stagnant in one area and catch them pretty good but that was a big one that jumped over there got him got him no nice little large mouth on the buzz bait I'm trying to throw that swim bait a little bit single swimmer but I'm getting hung up a lot, so this buzz bait's a great option to throw um, because there's not it's not hitting stuff subsurface and getting hung up. And a good little bass. He's, he tore up my swim bait though. Let me get another one with it. Then it came right to me. Just a little guy. Just a little schooly guy in the coomtail. I think that's our fifth bass in the afternoon, so not bad numbers wise for not very long fishing. We just need a couple of kickers. I guess we don't need them, need them, but we would enjoy them. I would enjoy a couple of kickers. I think they're gonna be back over this way. I kind of went back this way for a little bit. I got baited in, I saw a couple of fish jump. Then it was being a couple of fish. Seems like the masses are over here. There's way more shad. It's also deeper over here. 
little bit more open too, a little bit easier to fish. There we go. <laughs> Got you. No nice little bass. Can't complain about that. There we go. There we go. There's a little bit better fish. I'm trying to stop myself. Yeah, a little tubster. Little chicken nugget looking bass. <laughs> How many is that? Like seven? Seven or eight. The hits just keep coming. Better fish. That's a better fish. Got him on the buzz bait. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we caught one on the buzz bait. Look at that one. That's our biggest of the day so far. He's only probably two pounds, but still put up a good fight. Beautiful fish. Love catching him out here in the swamp. I mean, literally, this is my happy place. Favorite place to fish on earth that I know of. Oh, he's mad. You can't be catching them on a buzz bait. That swim bait does not look too good, but I don't have any more of this color, so I'm gonna see if I can ride with it a little bit longer. Okay guys, real quick, I'd like to take a break in the video to thank Six Sense Fishing for supporting today's episode. In my hand right here, I have my monthly Super Six Sack from Six Sense Fishing, and we're gonna be doing a quick unboxing to see what we got in today's package. If y'all have not heard of the Super Six Sack from Six Sense Fishing, this is a great way to get a bunch of tackles sent to your door each and every month at a discounted rate and to get some really cool stuff and really build out an awesome tackle arsenal. I've been getting these for dang near four years now and I have just, I don't even know what to do with all this stuff. I've gotten so much of it now. And what I really like about the Super Six Sack is that you unlock access to exclusive colors and new bait releases before anybody else. So let's go on ahead and let's see what we have in this month's sack. Starting off with one of my favorite crankbaits right here. This is a Movement ADX Wake. Uh, this is just a waking style crankbait goes down a foot deep and this is an awesome custom bluegill color really cool bait power on through to the next one we've got oh here's our exclusive right here a bag of clout worms guys you know that these baits are deadly this is the 6.3 inch version and the exclusive color to the sack is gill dust just this really nice green pumpkin colored worm it's got purple and orange flake looks really really nice i love the larger size clout worm Seems to trigger a little bit larger than average bite. Stoked to have those. Moving on, we've got a Munch 40. This is the black magic color, great for stained water. And this is a really hard thumping crankbait. Really awesome for when you get those muddy, like I said, those muddy water conditions. And then we have an axle swim jig. This is a really cool swim jig. It's got this cool weedless hook design. You just screw a swim bait on there and just start ripping through the grass. I've caught a bunch of fish on this thing. This is a really cool color too grass smash just looks like a little bluegill following it we got like three more things in here oh baby here we go here's a fall killer right here swank 66x i was hoping to find some shad colored crankbaits in here so this is one of my favorite colors in the entire six cents lineup this is shad burst it's kind of just this nice shad pattern with some chrome finish to it and what's cool about the swank is in most crankbaits when they dive they dive kind of down like this this guy will kind of go like this and roll uh, parallel to the lake bottom it kind of keeps you from getting hung up in the stuff below and it's great for fishing around grass that's gonna be a killer this fall. We got another shad crankbait, there we go. Crushed 50X, or 50S, silence, the silent square bill. Yep, no rattles. Another good shad imitating color, chrome thread fin. And then we're gonna round it out with some wacky worm hooks, which will pair awesome with a clout worm. Show you guys how to rig that up really, really quickly. Find the center of the worm, or a little off center. Boom, wacky style. That right there will get munched anywhere across the country. So guys, if y'all are interested in learning more about the Super Six Sack, I'll leave all the info linked down in the video description below. And if you decide you would like to scoop one up, use the code CJSUPER6 at checkout and you get your first sack for $10 off. It's a phenomenal deal. I don't know why you wouldn't do it, but let's go on ahead, let's get back out on the lake. Let's see if we can catch some more fish.
Let's go. There we go. Stay on. That one there ain't small. That's a big head. Oh my gosh. That's what we like right there. That is what we like. Ah! It bit me. Whew. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Swamp monster. <laughs> oh, yes. I just changed my swim bait on here. I was just talking about how that one was tore up. I uh, have some 4.0 sized whales on here, in here, and that one there looks like it got destroyed too. That's the caliber of fish we were after right there. That is like a three pounder, three and a half pounder. Look how healthy he is. Just big old, slabby old, beautiful, large enough bass. Just golden, look at the picture of him. Oh, that's beautiful. That is a gorgeous bass. We'll send him back. Ooh. Like I just said, I swapped up and put the old, uh, the four inch whale swim bait on here. I love throwing the whale on the back of a swim bait, on the back of a buzz bait. It just seems to track really, really well. Normally, I have super glue, and I'll glue like half the bait onto the hook so it doesn't slide down and just get broke. But your boy ain't got no super glue today, so we're kind of going through some plastics. But it is what it is. I got plenty of them, so we're good to go. If y'all haven't tried running a swim bait as your buzz bait trailer yet, I highly recommend it, especially now that we're getting it to fall. Like, it's really hard to beat. You can throw like a frog on the back of it or like a crawl trailer, but I love just a streamlined swim bait. The little tails don't get stuck in the hook. And um, as y'all can tell, the fish just absolutely clobber it. And it's a good way to catch big ones. I wouldn't be surprised if the five or six or seven pounder came up and decided to eat this thing today. Whew, we're definitely in the right place. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, we ain't done yet, baby. <laughs> Heck yeah. There's a good one. Two and a half pounder out here on the lily pad. All right, guys, back with you. This is actually 24 hours later than the last time we spoke. Uh, we're back out here on the lake. We're in the uh, cypress tree swamp, and we're out here for round two. So um, actually, this morning, Jay and I got up and came out here and did some fishing. You'll see that video up next from this one. Um, but whenever I was paddling out here, I realized just how much the lake had dropped overnight and how difficult it was to get out here. And um, it really got me thinking like, man, that I mean, we're really running out of time as far as um, being able to actually paddle from our house out here to this area. And that is very sad, but um, I want to make sure that I got the most out of this area. So we're back out here this afternoon. Um, we might be able to get back out here tomorrow. I'm not sure. We can, we can access this for, from some other spots on the lake. Um, but as far as just that easy, direct paddle from my house, this could be it. Like legit, like not even not even kidding so um and also i was thinking about it the last video i had where i was out bass fishing um i told y'all that the next time i went bass fishing i was going to keep some and cook them and do a catch and cook and i failed to do that yesterday i didn't have a stringer but today i have got a stringer it's in my pocket i can't get it out there it is there is my old trusty chain metal stringer and uh, we're gonna come back out here to the same area we were at yesterday. I've got the swim bait, I've got the top water, and we're gonna see if we can't catch a few and take them home and cook them up 
for supper. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We've got about an hour and a half of daylight to fish. It's looking juicy. When Jay and I were out here early this morning, there weren't a whole lot of bass moving around, but I think that's just because it's more of an afternoon deal out here right now. So we're gonna make our way through the swamp, get out here where we caught them yesterday and see if we can't catch a few more that we can take home and eat tonight for supper. It feels like this place has already dropped a foot since this morning. I wonder if they opened up another gate. I don't know. It just seems low. It seemed low yesterday and it seems low, low today. Hopefully there'll still be some bass swirling around out here. Got the swim bait. See if we can't, oh. See if we can't call one out of here. And all the bass we catch today are up for grabs. There we go, they're still here. They're still here. <laughs> Second cast, that's a perfect size right there. I mean, the ones yesterday were perfect too. If I catch any that are like in that three pound class, I'll probably throw them go just because, throw them go. I'll probably let them go just because I don't really prefer to eat three pound bass. But this guy will be super tasty. I think I've got seven clips in my stringer, so see if we can't fill it up. First one of the afternoon mission part two. That was two casts in. Only thing is, I'm not sure about dragging them around through this trap, but it should be all right. Caught that guy on the three inch six cents baby whale. Uh, guys, if you're looking for a good swim to throw around this fall, these guys are super deadly. The three inch, three and a half inch, they got all sizes all the way up to four and a half inches. Um, they also have the jig heads that pair with them using the eighth ounce um, little finesse swim bait head. And we are snagged. Well, that sucks. It's so low, I get snagged a lot now. It looks like it's clear, but it ain't. I gotta go get it. Gotta go fetch it up. But what I was saying is if y'all do want to get some, I'll leave all of the fishing gear that I use in these videos linked down in the video description. When you're on Six Sense Fishing, be sure to punch in that code CJ10 at checkout, and that'll save you 10% off. Get up here and get snagged. I haven't heard any fish schooling, which is what they were doing more of yesterday. There's a bunch of stumps right here. Yep. So move up this way a little bit. There's one. Oh, it came off. No. And they're biting this thing right now. I feel like this is the time that they bit the best yesterday. Oh gosh. Got you. Decent one. Oh, he came off too. Gosh, dang. I got a weird hook set on that one. And he smoked it. He smoked it. Nice one. Ain't losing this one. Get in here. There we go. Two for four all of a sudden. There we go. Clobbered it. He's bleeding a little bit too. Nice one. Probably pound and a half. String up on his little clip. They are acting ferocious. There we go. Stay on. Stay on, little guy. Oh yeah, this is another large mouth. Another nice one for the stringer. Not too bad. I lost my uh, my one swim bait that I had. I actually had one break me off. Luckily, I had a little Ned head here in the kayak. So that's all we're working with now. I don't know where my pack of jig heads went that I put in here, but I cannot find them. They're probably in here, but I cannot find them, so. I gotta uh, be careful and not lose this last little jig head. It's not the best jig head for what I'm trying to do, but it obviously just worked. And it's our fourth one on the stringer. So we can't get a couple more. That's a big one. That's a big one. Stay on, stay on, I'm in a bad spot. Oh my gosh, she's on the other side of the stick. No. 
Stay on. Stay on. I stuck the stick. He came free. Is that a bass? Oh, it's a good bass. Let's go. <laughs> that was crazy. Hey, that's a good bass right there. He'll make the stringer. That's our biggest one. He's probably a two pounder, two and a quarter pound. That's usually about the uh, the top size. This is the upper class of bass that I normally like to keep. Again, really just for flavor and texture. Uh, I've eaten some that are bigger than that and they're not bad, obviously. Uh, but this is just my favorite size to eat if I'm gonna eat largemouth. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. He makes that last one I put on there look like a little dink. Hopefully he doesn't flop off of this thing. He's getting my leg all slimy. Okay, we got a we got a nice stringer now. I'm surprised that one stayed on. We didn't break my line or nothing. He is angry. Stay on me, stay on me. Yeah, he almost came off. I saw it hook, unhook and rehook him just then. There we go, another nice one for the stringer. Oh, snap, no. Dang it, that last good one we had came off. Look at that, he broke the pin. Well, maybe I probably shouldn't put this one on that pin. He might have just been too big. Feels pretty solid. He probably just shook free. Oh gosh. Dang, we lost one of our bass. That was supposed to be number six on the stringer. But we're back to five. That's pretty good, I'd say. Oh, that one jumped right there. Might can make up for it right here. Oh, they're jumping right here. Let's see if we can make up for it real quick. One escaped, I think just one escaped. Made up for it, he'll stay on. Oh, he spit the big old shed. There we go. We'll take two one pounders for a two pounder, right? <laughs> there was another chasing after him too. He spit up a big old shed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, I think I have seven clips on this thing. Okay, one more clip and we're done. We can start doubling, but I don't think I need more than seven bass. <laughs> Can we get one more real quick without losing any? One more bass. We want one more. One more bass. I want to catch him right here. I'm going to have to go up just a little bit further. Nope. See that right below the surface? Camp and smacked it. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, it's a really nice one. Stay on. Get in here. Yeah, baby. That is awesome. That right there will make up for that one we lost. We got three really solid fish. <laughs> Baby whale doing them nasty. He bit it on the surface. I think the bait was even jacked up and he still came up and got that thing. And that's how fire these fish are. Look at the look at the build. I talk about this a lot, but they're just so thick. They got big shoulders, that little area right there. Meaty. These are going to be some delicious eating. I know we don't keep bass all the time. And... Um, it's really not for any political reason or nothing. It's just, we just, you know, we like to fish for fun just as much as we like to fish for food. And usually bass fishing is where I get to have some fun. We've got a lot of fish in our freezer, but we'll eat these fresh today. We'll add them on here to the stringer. I really don't have any more clips because the clip I'm using right here is my safety clip. So we're gonna double up. We're gonna double down. Oh, I don't wanna double down. Do I have any more clips? All I got is a safety clip. Here's what we'll do. We'll string them up conventional style. It can't get off like that. I should have done it with that big one. Okay, let's take a look at the stringer. Oh yeah, take a look at that stringer right there, guys. We've got seven really nice largemouth bass for now. Um, I guess those other six could potentially pop off. That one on top ain't going nowhere, but I don't think they're going anywhere. We got some small ones. We got some medium ones. There's going to be excellent table fare. We're going to uh, head back to the house, get them cleaned up, and we're going to fry them up for dinner.
Hey, Big Boss. Hello. Hey, Sammy. Ha! Hey, Cypress. Ha! <laughs> you crazy. Sammy. Look at Sammy. Sammy got her hair brushed. Brush her hair. Oh, oh man. Sammy. Isn't she pretty? Sammy, can you look up? Sammy. <laughs> Cypress singing the Summy Tummy song. Summy Tummy, Summy Tummy, Summy Sum Sum. Oh. Summy is ready for bed. She is looking sleepy. It is her bedtime. You know what I'm ready for? Um, probably this delicious bash that you cooked. This delicious bash. <laughs> look at that. Take a look at that plate right there. We got our bass on the right. We got some mashed potatoes in the middle. We got some baked beans on the left. It should be scrumptious. <laughs> scrumptious. Sammy, can we get another smile? Can we get a smile? Chica, yeah, chica, there chica, it is. Chica. You're killing me. She's so cute. She is. Cypress, what are you doing? I'm making um tacos. You're making tacos. You're making tacos out of play-doh. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Hey, what's on your mouth? Play-doh. We don't eat Play-Doh. Do not eat Play-Doh. Cypress ate some Play-Doh. We threatened him. We said, you eat more Play-Doh? And what are we going to do with it? Nope. No. Nope. We're going to throw it away. We're going to throw it away. We're going to throw it away. We're going to throw it in the lake. You better not eat it. Or what's left of the lake? No, throw it away. Okay, then don't eat the Play-Doh. <laughs> Okay, I can't stand it any longer. We gotta get a taste yeah. test on this. Yes. Again, guys, look at that. It looks marvelous. It looks so good. The bass smells so good. So I seasoned yeah. it up with the old, old bay, and of course, sloppy mama. It's a deadly combo. Old bay plus sloppy mama on fish equals perfect every time. Here's a little bite. Mmm. Gotta love fresh fish. These fish were swimming like. Maybe two hours ago, max. Probably an hour and a half ago. And now they're swimming in my tummy. He's delicious. They're so good. Jay, you gotta get, you gotta get a taste of this. <laughs> the fish are swimming where? A sea. In the sea? <laughs> they're swimming in this sea. Hey, big boss, you gotta get a sample of that. Mm. Wish you could've been out there with me. I know. But we did catch some this morning. Oh, wow. I told the folks we went out earlier this morning. That's really good. That's good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Haven't had bass in a while. Yeah, those are the perfect size That's too. Mm. That's That's good. What? That's what we got. Yeah. That's a red we do get really good. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, one day you'll know. Cypress is, Cypress has the opportunity to know, but he just doesn't really like to eat fish. Cypress, do you like to eat fish? Um no. No? Why? I eat food. You like to eat food. <laughs> Fish is friends, not food, right? So if you're new to yo-yo fishing, I would love to take a second to show you guys how to set one of these bad boys up. So basically this is your yo-yo and it is an automatic fish catching device. So it's kind of shaped like a yo-yo. It's kind of why it gets the name yo-yo. But basically inside of here, you have a spool of braided line, nylon line, and uh, it's wrapped around a metal spring coil. So you can see if you pull your line out, you can set it to whatever depth you need to. And on the side of the yo-yo, we have these little notches. So you'll pull your line down to your desired depth and then you have this little arm right here and you'll just slide it into the notch. And then when you do that, your yo-yo is basically just set and it's ready to go. You'll have it baited with a minnow. When a fish bites it, so fish bites it, grabs the line, pulls it, it releases that spring mechanism and 
yanks the hook up into the roof of the fish's mouth and then the pulley system on the yo-yo helps keep the fish uh, pegged. When you're catching crappie, usually they'll just go straight up, they'll fight a little bit, and then the, um, the power of the spring will kind of just keep their heads up and they don't really fight anymore. And then as far as hanging them up goes, I like to attach like two feet of line to the yo-yo itself, and I like to make a loop in one end, and that is because when you go around the tree, you can just throw your yo-yo over the tree and then pass it through that loop. That way you're not wasting time actually tying it onto the tree and then you don't have to worry about cutting it off later. You can just hang up the yo-yo and take it down easily and effectively. Now when we bait our minnows, you can bait a minnow however you want to. You can hook it through the lips, through the eyes, wherever you want. I usually like to hook them in the back, right below the dorsal fin. I feel like that gives them the most action and it keeps them alive the longest. Just think, if you had a hook, you know, stabbed through your eyeballs, you probably wouldn't be that happy, you wouldn't be that comfortable, wouldn't swim around that much. But through the back, back there, above the backbone, they seem to have a lot of action, swim around a whole lot better. So I'm just setting them down. The water here is about three and a half to five feet deep. So I'm basically just setting the minnow down about two feet below the surface. The crappie will come up and they'll take that minnow down or whatever fish comes up and gets, they'll come up and get it. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about hanging up yo-yos. If you're new to yo-yo fishing, you haven't done it before, um, definitely make sure you check your local laws and regulations to make sure it is legal in your state. Make sure you are um, keeping up with how many you can actually have out and that you're keeping an eye on them throughout the night. Anyways, we have about, I don't know, dozen and a half left to hang up. We are losing daylight rapidly. And uh, we could also be catching fish at any moment now. Fish that we have, you know, 10 or 12 set up already. So let's get back to hanging them up. Let's find some more juicy spots. I'm really excited about tonight. Um, just seeing if there's any fish out here and, uh, or just to see what types of fish are out here right now. I know that crappie will be in here at some point or another. And that's what's great about yo-yos. You can cover a lot of water and just find fish. And what we really like to do is set a yo-yo spread up, figure out where the fish are at, and then go back in with rods and reels and catch them that way. Guys, this is crazy. We've already got our first fish. I don't know what it is, but it looks silvery. It's either a crappie or a bass. As long as it's still on there. Oh, please still be on there. We literally just baited this yo-yo. Is he on there? Where's he at? He's on there. What is it? Please be a crappie. Please be a crappie. Please be a big old crappie. <gasps> Guys, it's a crappie. Target acquired. <laughs> Looky there. Yes, that is so freaking exciting. Oh, we've already got our first fish and it's a stud black crappie. Oh my gosh. All right, I know I'm gonna be baiting more right here. We literally baited this thing up like two minutes ago. Let's get this guy thrown in the bucket. Let's get this yo-yo rebaited and let's keep moseying around here in this swamp. All right guys, it's dark now, but we are hooked up with our second fish and it is of the whiskered variety. Check this out. We've got a nice channel cat here. This guy will play. Let's get him up here in the boat. Oh, he's bigger than I thought he was. Goodness. Oh man. My goodness, look at the size of that channel cat. Probably about a three pounder. So that is a perfect eaten size channel cat. We will definitely throw him in the bucket with our crappie that we have already. I've got, I had a feeling it was gonna be a mixed bag tonight, but anything is fair game. Beautiful channel catfish, great second fish. Let's get him in the bucket. All right, let's get this one rebaited real quick. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of vultures roosting above me. I hope they don't poop on me. Get this guy back down. That looks good right there. Oh, I think we got another fish somewhere. Oh gosh, I think we got another fish, guys. I'm not sure I heard splash. I promise you guys, I am not making this up. I baited this yo-yo, moved three feet away from it, and it shot off with another beautiful black crappie another stud let's get that light off him a little bit and that one's getting kind of dark he's getting his spawning colors that was so wild maybe i need to stick to these outside trees i came out here on the outside i have a bunch of trees bedded up on the inside of the swamp and that is a stud look how dark he is they are definitely getting their spawning colors i'm gonna bait up a few more yo-yos out here on the outside and then i think i'm gonna go try to wrangle jay up and see if she wants to come out here and join in on all this fun these yo-yos are going off like crazy that is so awesome Get big guy here in the bucket. Let's freaking go. All right, here we go, guys. Hooked up with another nice big old channel cat. Oh, I got you. I got you. I barely got you. Check out the size of that big guy. Another really nice channel catfish. Probably four pounds or so. 
excellent, excellent fish on the yo-yo. Let's throw them in the bucket. Keep on going, see if we got any more fish hooked up. Check this out, guys. Move up to our next tree. A couple after that catfish, and we've got ourselves, oh, in the boat, another slab crappie off the yo-yo. Another nice black crappie. Chunky one. Oh, man. We are getting into some really good slabs tonight. I mean, it's not a whole lot of action, but that means that there's some moving in here and that the action should only get better as the water temp begins to warm up a little bit more. Excellent start to the spring yo-yo crappie fishing season. Let's get him in the bucket. Guys, we are doing really good tonight on the yo-yos. We've got another catfish here. Looks like another nice channel cat. Come here, big guy. Oh man, oh yes. Look at the size of that one. That is an awesome eaten size channel cat. Fat too. Hooked right in the top of the mouth. That right there is exactly where you want to have them hooked on a yo-yo. They just can't come off when they're hooked in the top lip like that. And that, my friends, is another really solid channel catfish. And it got three channel cats and three black crappies so far. Awesome. Okay, looks like we got a pretty good fish on this one. I, I'm sure it's a catfish. I don't know how big he is, but he's fighting really good. Oh, I see him down there. Look at him. Look at him. Look at that yo-yo go. Let's just watch and see how this plays out. Let's see if we can get him back up here to the surface. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh gosh, this has got to be a good one. Got to be a really good fish. Come on up. Come on up, big guy. Oh, it's a good one. Don't get hung up. Uh-oh, we might have to might have to pull him back in. He's trying to get stuck on stuff. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, he's a good one. Come on up, big guy. Get out of those sticks. Get out of those sticks. He's all caught up in these sticks. He's not super huge, but he's a good one. Oh, I got him. <laughs> yes. Look at that one. That's another stud channel cat. We have definitely been outnumbered by the channel cat tonight. We were hoping to get a bunch of crappie, but channel cat are awesome. I mean, it don't get much better than that. Catching some slab crappie, some nice three to four pound channel cat on yo-yos. Woo. Springtime, baby. Gotta love it. Look at this, guys. We got another big old fat channel cat. Oh, he's fighting. Oh, he's fighting. And he's hooked good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Man, I am shocked with how many channel cat we're catching. I thought we were going to catch a bunch of crappie tonight. Really solid fish, too. And the quality is just incredible. Really solid fish. Gotta love it. Not catching any bullheads, which is awesome. Most of the time when we're running, running yo-yos out here in the swampy area, we catch a lot of bullheads, which they're good eating, too, but... Channel catfish are far more superior to bullheads. That's freaking sweet. I think we have like six channel cats now. That's awesome. It's the next morning, guys, and unfortunately, that storm we were talking about pushed through a little bit quicker than we originally anticipated, so we had to cut things short as far as the yo-yo mission goes. But we were able to link up with some really nice fish. We got our target species. We got three really slabby black crappie. This one here has actually got his spawning colors a little bit. Look at that. Look how dark black that guy is. That is what we're looking for. I love it when they get these dark colors in the springtime. And I'm thinking maybe there's some more moving in. The crappie were actually on the outside trees of the swampy area, so maybe that's where I need to put the yo-yos up next time. But along with the crappie, we also got into a nice mess of channel cats. We got five of these really, really nice sized guys. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more when you're hanging yo-yos, baiting them up with minnows. These are the two fish that you want to take home with you. Got two out here on the clan table. Got three more down here in the cooler on ice. And we are about to clean these boys up so we can cook them up later for supper. But I hope you guys have been enjoying the video so far. It's a little bit difficult to film at night by yourself with just a GoPro and a flashlight, but I think we made it work. If you're enjoying, hit that like button for me. Now let's continue on and clean some of these fish. On today's lunch menu, we have the fresh channel catfish. We have it seasoned up with some Cajun spicy spices, and we're gonna be throwing them on the hot grill. We got a piece of aluminum foil in there. I'm not sure why it's kind of, I think I sprayed some canola oil. It's kind of getting kind of burned up a little bit, but it should be okay. We're gonna throw these bad boys onto the grill. 
Oh man, look how good those look. Those are gonna be so delicious for lunch today. Freshly caught, big channel cat. Those shouldn't take too long to grill. Set the lid on there. Woo! That's gonna be hot whenever I take it off. I need to really get that handle fixed to kind of yeah. figure out something. It's kind of jacked up, but we got two fillets on there. One for me, one for Jay. Jay missed out on the yo-yo fishing adventure. The storm came through and couldn't get out there in time. But she's gonna have to go out there next time, right Jay? Right. <laughs> so, I'm sad I missed it. Yeah, so we're gonna let these guys cook for a little bit and as soon as they're ready, we're gonna give y'all the official taste test. Here we go guys, we have got our plates set. We have our spicy Cajun grilled catfish fillets, the brown rice, garnished with love with some parsley and then we've got our favorite lady angler over here she's got her plate ready and for those of you that are wondering yes this I'm, lady is still pregnant i'm still pregnant oh man man <laughs> today is actually her due date yeah not my due date still no baby oh the doctors everyone everyone said that she was going to have her baby way before her due date and uh they were wrong she yeah. baby c is still kicking in there yeah I think I just provide really good womb service. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. And we've been feeding them all this good fish. That yeah. is some fresh, spicy catfish. They say you eat some spicy food, so that's what we're doing today. Some spicy catfish. <laughs> you can go ahead and give it a taste. Yeah, it looks delicious. It's seasoned on one side and not seasoned on the other. You can okay. see it's pretty heavily seasoned on one side. Yeah, it looks very spicy. I use some, uh, some redfish blackening magic and some slappy mama. Do you love it? That is spicy. Wow. This <laughs> might do the trick. Oh, and I use some Slap Your Mama, um, like, uh, hot sauce, too. Oh, yeah? Just a little bit of that on oh, there. Oh, it's so good, Cole. Mmm. Just what she wanted. Two thumbs up. It's a spicy catfish. Jay actually prefers um, catfish grilled over fried. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of the same way, too. I like it both ways, but it's hard to beat, like, a freshly grilled Ooh. catfish fillet. That's because I'm kicked to it. <laughs> it's so good though. I'm glad you like it. Look at that. Super mm. seasoned. She got the better looking filet of the two. Mine actually kind of broke a little bit, but look at that. White, flaky, deliciousness. Definitely delicious. Good with the rice too in it. Mm hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you. Got to love it. You're welcome. I'm going to give me a little taste test of this. Give me this little spicy morsel here. It's going to be a big bite. Big bite. Let's go. It's exactly what I was going for. I love that. That is so good. And the best part of this is that this was just one of those catfish. They're all about the same size. Um, so we have eight more fillets like this. We could just grill them up every day for lunch. Mm. Mm. You're so good. But I guess we could fry them. We can turn them just to fish tacos. We don't, we don't really like to make um, channel catfish fish tacos. For some reason, the, the meat doesn't just flake up the way we want it to. But that right there. That right there could impress some people. Yeah. I don't think I'm a good cook or something. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's spicy? Yeah, it's like, the bite I had wasn't too spicy. I could probably shake some more Sloppy Mama on there, get like the hot. There's a Sloppy Mama with like the, uh, it says hot on there. It's like extra, extra spicy. That would probably do it. Mmm. And you can't forget the, can't forget the parsley. That's picked fresh from the garden. <laughs> I'm certainly how you're supposed to do that. That's good. Hey, if you need to cool it down, take a bite of parsley. It cools it down instantly. Nice. Wow, that is really good. All right, well, we just finished up our lunch, and honestly, it turned out way better than mm. expected. I thought it was going to just taste like some ordinary, just, you know, <laughs> grilled blackened catfish, but it was really great. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a great combination of spices, and I'm glad that it worked out. And it was a lot of fun running those yo-yos and catching those fresh fish, and I know that is only the beginning of the spring yo-yo fishing season. If y'all would like to see us go back out there and target some more crappie, some more catfish on the yo-yos, let us know down in the comment section. And if you enjoyed today's episode, do me a huge favor, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the future fishing missions. We're, We're calling Jay, Jay and we'll see ya on the next episode. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>